And in the studio with me, it's our regular monthly visit with our friends from Indiana County Technology Center, ICTC, Rachel Rabowski, Diane Rupert with us this morning. Ladies, good morning. Good morning. What are we talking about today? We're talking about uh, adults who want to go back to school and get a skill that's going to change their lives. Oh, well, that sounds like a very good thing, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, okay. So um, we think of secondary students when we associate ICTC with its I don't know if clientele is the, the, the word that you would use <laughs> with your students, uh, but there is a very vibrant and year-long adult education program going too, Rachel. Absolutely. We have students in the summer, uh, fewer than we do um, during the regular school year, but we have adults all year long in um, over 13, 14 program areas. Um, uh, Diana heads up the practical nursing program both here and um, down towards Pittsburgh, so she'll mm-hmm. be able to talk a little bit about what that looks like for them. And uh, mm-hmm. we're we're ro- enrolling in all programs right now. Um, so students that are thinking, I haven't decided what I'm doing. No, oh, okay. well, we can solve that. You can fix that for them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things mm-hmm. about uh, the different programs is uh, you mentioned you're enrolling all the time, and uh, different types of classes and programs uh, have different start dates, don't they? There are some. Um, are most of our programs will have a pretty standard start towards the end of August, like mm-hmm. you'll see in, in most post-secondary environments. Um, our cosmetology program has multi-year starts, and definitely our CDL, we're enrolling students on a monthly basis for that. It's a short, a shorter uh, length program, um, and you finish in about four weeks. Yeah, and people are really wanting to get into those jobs. Well, let's put it this way. The employers are wanting you to, Correct. to, to <laughs> give them employees because it's a pretty desperate situation employment-wise right now. There are jobs out there. We got to find the people to fill them. Absolutely, Diana. You were trying to fill those jobs as well, but uh, I am. You have uh, with the with the nursing program at uh, ICTC. You mm-hmm. have a, a very vibrant program that's really long term, hasn't it? You've been there a long time. Long, long time. Uh, the original practical nursing program dates back to the n- early 1970s. Mm-hmm. Uh, so ICTC, and of course, at that time, the Indiana County Votech, it was called has had a practical nursing program for some time. The curriculum was redone, oh, geez, I think about 2005. Uh, And it is a modern, up-to-date curriculum. We have a full semesters of college, which sometimes people don't realize within our practical nursing program. So you waste no time coming to the practical nursing program. Even if your long-term goal is to be a registered nurse, you can still begin on nursing's career ladder in the practical nursing program, a one-year program, you actually graduate in a little bit over 11 months. Within that time, a full semester's of, uh, worth of college, plus your nursing curriculum. And it depends on which registered nursing program a person might decide to enroll in, how much of that and what they need to do to be able to utilize the nursing component. But nonetheless, uh, the majority of that education, they're going to be able to take with them, if not in college credit, but certainly within experience. So it is a strong program. I don't know if you've heard our new news. For some time, we've been in the top 10 of the practical nursing program. There's there's about 55 in the state of Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. This past year, we were ranked number five. Now, I know what you're going to say. We're not number one, so we still have some work <laughs> to do. However, we sure are proud of the faculty and, of course, the student population that comes to the Indiana County Technology Center for Nursing. Yeah, and Students who graduate from your programs, uh, you mentioned them going forward then for mm-hmm. for RN training. Um, that can happen right here in Indiana. Oh, my goodness. You know, we call practical nursing a career in a, re- a career and a year because it absolutely can be. Practical nursing is a wonderful bedside nursing career. And if you think outside of the box, there's all kinds of different places where practical nursing can, nurses can work outside of even long-term care in the hospital setting. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, think of all the registered nursing programs, too. Um, Mount Aloysius was just in our classroom yesterday talking about their program and how LPNs can matriculate into their program and get credit for the time they spent in the practical nursing program. Uh, WCCC, we have an articulating agreement with. Um, IUP has an LPN to BSN program. So there are all types of opportunities right here in Indiana. If you wanted to start out, see uh, what you think about practical nursing. There is 
no time and, and really very limited cost that you are wasting going this route for nursing education. Is it true that uh, there are many students who start out as LPNs and become RNs? They sort of use that as a not maybe a, a skipping stone or a stepping stone, but yeah. uh, but in effect, that's what it is. It's, yeah. It allows them to have their career, to be able to earn a living, and at the same time be working toward the RN. Right, right. And, and sometimes it's just the fact that um, education can be intimidating. Mm-hmm. And so having that confidence and going back to school and, and having that success can propel them forward uh, to do greater things. There are many, many of my students that continue on to registered nursing. Mm-hmm. And Rachel, RN uh, or the nursing program itself is not the only healthcare career that people can train for at ICTC. Yeah, we also have a medical assisting program. Um, and I think kind of stepping off of what Diana's talking about, in most of our programs, we see that students take that step. Maybe they've you know um, had a life change and they need a new career for to support their family. They got out of um, high school, went to college, and was like, I don't like this class of 50 students in a lecture. I want to work with my hands. And they come back and they find a program at the ICTC, but they get that training and they actually find a love for learning. They enjoy their experience. And very, very many of our students will at some point in their career go back and obtain additional degrees and utilize their education at the school, both in propelling that forward, so shortening their time in college, but also they're working while they're going to school and they're not taking on that maybe not taking on that student loan debt that you would for a four-year degree before you can start work. The maturity that comes uh, with growing up (laughs) and and getting out of school and maybe working for a little bit before you get into uh, uh, pursuing an adult education degree, uh, that can be a tremendous benefit too. It can, but our programs have such a mix. We have students Mm -hmm. right out of high school, and we really do focus on taking them from um, maybe no knowledge in the area that they choose to have either interested in and they leave there with fundamental entry-level skills to be able to walk into that industry and start work. Mm -hmm. Um, They might not be the head chef, but they're going to have the skills to become the head chef. And so we're we're a one-year commitment in most cases under, um, you know, 10 months. And uh, students take that commitment, and they really take away valuable skills. Um, In most programs, they're earning industry certifications that whether they're work, you know, when they get into the work field, that's actually going to be of value to their employer. Um, we really do focus on um, the the industry demand and what the industry wants graduates to have so that they're desirable to, to be a hire whenever they have that opportunity to apply. We hear so much these days about the, um, the lack of qualified employees and some of these hands-on skills uh, and, and these careers that are out there just waiting and, and companies begging for employees. You mentioned, I believe, 14 programs. We have over 14. Mm-hmm. More than 14. What, we, what, what we, are some of those careers? So um, we have some that are like fully adult. Practical nursing is one, mm-hmm. medical assisting, our evening welding. Um, and then we have cosmetology-related programs that are fully adult. And then we have the opportunity to enroll students into our curriculum where our 10th, 11th, and 12th graders are gaining skills. Um, at, and it gives a very economical cost. It's a uh, 8 to one thirty type schedule, four days a week, so very convenient. And adult students are able to work. Um, also be coming to school, um, and it wraps up in 10 months. So we can do that in machining, um, HVAC, uh, masonry. I know that our local region is, is so hungry for welders, um, especially people that are willing to travel. You know, within an hour radius, there is good paying work, and they are just desperate. They call us and stop in, do you have, and our students are all placed. Yeah. So um, it's it's. If you're ready to, to take the leap and you kind of maybe have a little bit of a travel in your life, CDL is a good one. Um, if you like to care for people or make people feel good, cosmetology, the healthcare field are, are really good fields for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and machining is a really good one if you like to work with your hands, be creative, but maybe not so much with someone's hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Um, one of the things that might stand as an impediment to someone is they might have in their heads that it's just too expensive. I can't afford to take an adult ed case, uh, a course at ICTC because I'm so busy in my life right now. I can't step back from my job and, uh, and sacrifice that money uh, in order to maybe pursue uh, a different career path. 
ICTC does some uh, whatever you can, I know, in order to help people out with some financial aid. Absolutely. Our programs are accredited through the Pennsylvania Department of Education, so we're able to um, consider students for Pell Grant Stafford loans. Um, there are often some state grants that will come out for certain targeted industry programs that the state has identified as needing workers, mm -hmm. um, and so our students are able to apply for those funding. Uh, for that funding as well. And then we try to look at how we schedule our programs so that they're able to maybe continue some work while they're in school yeah. to help with that. Yeah, transition. I know very often there there are retraining type funds that become available um, and you never know when those funds are coming out and, Correct. and when they're going to announce those. But when they do, that's another resource that students might be able to. Right, and we have a full-time financial aid coordinator and she's very good at you know, talking with a student and letting them know the options that we're aware of and mm -hmm. then as students become aware of scholarships and earn them, we we don't we don't discriminate on scholarships, so you can yeah. you can bring any scholarship to the ICT. Yeah, and Diane, I assume that's the mm -hmm. case with the nursing. It, it is, and, and in addition to that, we have a part-time practical nursing program. It is in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, and you might think, oh my goodness, now why would anyone in the area here be interested in that? But for those individuals in Blairsville and Salzburg area, it's actually not bad at all. I've had many people who have driven to our South Hills location. It's right by Century 3 Mall, um, and our clinical time, much of our clinical time is in Greensburg through that program, so so we do have a part-time option. It is a 16-month program. It is the same exact curriculum, so you get the same benefits of the college courses and all the nursing component. It is simply in a little bit slower, mm -hmm. uh, and also an alternate timing being the evening and somewhat weekend uh, program. Yeah. So another option. Yeah, and, and people can carpool as well. And, oh, yes. And I'm sure they do. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, Rachel, uh, folks are interested in this. They want to know what do I need to do to get this whole process started because maybe I haven't been in the educational system for a while. I have no idea where to start. What do they do? Just give us a call. Um, Gina or myself, we'll talk with them, find out what they're interested in, or if they are interested in practical nursing, they'll call, and Diana or Linda will help them out. We're, we're a small school. We get to know your face and your name, and uh, you, you will have someone to kind of help walk you through that process to get you from. I'm interested so I know where, what program I'm enrolling in, and, yeah. and you're ready to go in August. Yeah, and, and there are people, I'm sure, that are uh, you know interested in maybe this particular targeted area of education, and then once they talk with you and examine ICTC, they might find that there's something else that is even more appropriate for them or, or they have even more interest in. They, they certainly could. Um, we have a variety of options um, that, that kind of can uh, cater to what your uh, interests and strengths are. Um, but ultimately, they all will get you to a point where you're ready to enter a new career that, that will get you moving forward. Yeah. Um, but I forgot an important piece. You need my number. So if you want to call <laughs> the ICTC, you call 724-349-6700. Um, to reach adult education, you call extension 131. To reach practical nursing, you dial 217. But if you don't know either one of those and you just call, someone will get you to They'll us. fix you up. Yep. yep. Fix you up. Good, because I'm thinking of my degree in cosmetology machining. I think that would be an awesome Which you mentioned earlier. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, it is Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank here on WCCS, the voice of Indiana County, AM 1160 and 101.1 FM. And 101.1 FM.